back at you with another man in the van. This might be a struggle. Uh, again, thanks to Whole Shot Motorhomes. This might be a struggle, not for my guest, Josh Gilbert, uh, for me, because I'm poorly. I think I've damaged my vocal cords for literally a week of screaming and hollering. Uh, I'll rock it till sundown event, then the Supercross, then today. Anyway, that's my, bring out the violins for me. Oh. Um, Josh Gilbert, it's great to have you back in the van, but but more importantly it's just great to see you back racing so let's go back to that we just worked out i thought it was last year i interviewed you but it wasn't it's been like nearly two years yeah yeah two years yeah um, uh but well before we get into it with josh i just want to apologize about the state of the van uh, i haven't been back home since our event there's a load of stuff chucked in here i don't normally live like a gypsy <laughs> um but josh yeah it's been a little while since we've been like here and of course the key thing here is um your, your knee injury yeah so obviously that's kept you off a bike but you, you know, how difficult was that for you as a pro racer at that point, knowing that you've got to sit out for a while? And did you ever have any doubts when you got the injury that you, you know, things like that, there's no guarantees that you're going to come back as strong as you once were. So right. was it dark times for you? Um, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it's the, my first sort of ever injury I've had. I've, I've done quite well for injuries really. And then to have this, I, kind of no I was, I was pretty positive really um yeah and we got it done uh end of january um the first month was quite slow but yeah just kind of got on with it and got my head down and literally i i'll say now that i could not have done anything more it's, even being back riding now you hear from people oh, like we did this we did that everything that people have sort of said like I feel like I did everything possible to get back yeah. and get the knee strong and get back as quick as, quick as possible. Um, so what kind of advice did you get? I mean, who was it, your doctor? Did you have to go private with you, Did you go to a renowned knee surgeon? How, how, how did it all yeah, come I, about? Well, I think I did it earlier on in the year. And oh, so you, so you reckon you've done yeah, it and then carried yeah, on riding? Yeah, um, I just managed to swell in and sort of yeah got got through the got through what i had to do really and if i'm honest i didn't really get much problems with it and it was just a silly thing like going out mountain biking and doing a downhill section and i literally did a jump and landed two straight legged and my knee went back the other way again oh that's nasty at the best and of times. um i think i think earlier in the year i did my acl and it was okay and i, I managed to get over that and it felt fine and then yeah the mountain biking i think because then i had no acl i've then nipped my meniscus and that did cause me problems yeah like it would it, one morning i thought i gave it a week and i was icing it and stuff and it started to get better and better and i actually started cycling again this was yeah december time and then i it was just randomly one morning i woke up I literally had to sit down all day because my knee had just locked and I, I, I was like this is just so strange it was getting better and better and better and I thought oh I haven't done anything serious no. and then one morning I wake up and the knee's just locked and yeah because that's I, I've had that and it, it's um I've done my ACL but way after I finished racing just randomly actually <laughs> just stepped out of a shop in the village and just crumpled to the floor and the irony was some old deer with a shopping basket actually had to help me off of the floor <laughs> But anyway, yeah, the the, menis the meniscus thing is is it can be painful, can't it? Yeah. More, probably more, more than the more the ligament. than the actual ACL. Yeah, de yeah. Oh, definitely. So like, was you suffering with that pain? Yeah, pain? well, they sort of. It depends on how bad it is. Like I went and seen someone, and they straight away was like, "Yeah, you've done your ACL," and I sort of like laughed it off. Yeah. I was like, "Nah, it's bit, I'm, I'm, I'm alright." And but then after he sort of said about it and said what he was doing, I was, I thought. Yeah, well, I did that like ages ago. Yeah, <laughs> and I never went and got it checked out when I think I first did it. And then, yeah, obviously the meniscus. It just when I was cycling and stuff, I could just feel something in there that was just like almost twinging or like clicking. And it just yeah, it just felt like it was like crushing and stuff. And it it wasn't right. And I lost sort of quite a lot of mo flexibility in my knee. I'm um, just checking. I'm checking out the marks on your yeah, legs. Actually. Yeah, it's pretty still scars. Your scars, yeah. Scars, I, won't, I won't lower depth the camera down, but <laughs> yeah, you've got some bitching dark. scars. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, once I had the op, my flexibility is like so much better in my knee. Is I it? Couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I can. Um, when you say better, do you mean 
better than before you even thought you had the injury. Oh, no. No, no it's, so you're it's, not, to... it's not as good as my good knee. Right. <laughs> but it's not far off at all. I yeah. can I can bring my heel right into my right. bum and same as my good knee. The only difference is um, the, the hyperextension. You get yeah. like 10% or something. I think I got like about five in my in my right. bad leg so yeah it's but it was way better than what I'd had we, yeah, when I did my ACL tell me this then you just you know like I just said at the start you said about or I asked you about like a you know dealing with that when you got back on a bike so you do all the hard work you get the surgeons and doctors advising you that first time you get back on a bike what's going through your head because you, um, you know you got you got to be thinking geez i just just concentrate on keeping that leg up yeah and, does, and how long did it then take for you to get the confidence to start riding without thinking about the knee um i wasn't too bad actually i sort of got to the two month mark and i thought bloody hell i could actually go and ride now um but my surgeon or the um the guy i saw i already know him and he was like a knee specialist and then that's how I got on to right. I went private with one of his knee surgeons that well it's just down by me so I went through all private and got that so then afterwards I I stayed with him and just sort of went and seen him every sort of two three weeks or whatever yeah. and he'd give me some more exercises some more stuff to do and then it was just basically I pretty much took it all up just had to do it all myself and um, like I do my training and everything all myself so it, yeah it wasn't just had to sort of get on with it and get it done but yeah when I got back on the bike it was at the four month mark and my knee felt like really good so felt nearly as good as my good leg um, but it was so weird because I've not had that much time off probably had maybe a month yeah like you said off, you've hardly then, ever really been injured yeah so, so I've, I've never been injured so I've always got through the season had like maybe a month off and then got back on and like yeah got at it again so a month you don't really did yeah, you, you get, get on and get a bit of arm so were you on. getting frustrated at that point i mean you, you knew the, the end the, the last month of my like, recovery come on, come on. i was i was yeah getting like, climbing the walls frustrated actually yeah it was like it was just week after week just like oh, what should i do today oh, i'll go cycling then it's like oh i'll go gym uh oh, i actually could build started building up my running and stuff but there's only so much of that you can do yeah. and then it's just yeah you just biting at getting going but but then like you've said you did everything you could because you you could have easily you know regardless right? of any con uh, people telling you you could have gone ah oh, thinking you're all right and rushed back and, and yeah. done it so yeah. that's the I guess the hardest part with yeah. injury for any sportsman is first dealing with the injury but then the, the kind of keen you know the eagerness to come back and you've got to manage yeah, that yeah it, it trouble is it's so hard to know because obviously it's all inside it's not like you can yeah. see it and yeah a lot of, some people were saying wait a bit longer others were saying i think you're all right and it's just <laughs> we sort of there's only one yeah, person that mattered probably yeah. and that's the doctor i would have thought of that yeah point. and he, he, yeah i i was keeping in touch obviously with the surgeon and the the physio that was doing my knee and he sort of was like this is pretty impressive yeah. um so yeah, he gave me the go-ahead, and then literally I went to Ling, watched, and I think that was not the best <laughs> Not <thing>. easy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, I bet you were like, oof, yeah. really good out there. But then the next day, actually, we managed to go riding. So I was buzzing. It was. I remember we went to Ashdown, and that's not the best no, of tracks. it's not, and, is it? And because it is close to the Jeez. team, we just... we. I went with Paul, the mechanic, and, yeah, we just got the bike out it was raining and i was just going around and oh. i just couldn't care less because <laughs> i tell you what yeah well fair play but ashdown you know you get a lot of g outs down those yeah. hills a lot of pressure and weight yeah. on the knee so yeah yeah i mean i went around there on my own i was like yeah i, f I, f I feel all right <laughs> and then i think it was the next day we we went to fat cat and there was Flo and callum and then obviously then there was other people there <laughs> and i I was going around and I just my brain struggled to register with the bumps because like my eyes and stuff because I because I, I, so I hadn't had yeah, actually you hadn't been on a bike for that long yeah because I didn't I finished the season at Trentino the last GP and that was end of November or well, beginning of November it was pushing on and quite then, late because of Covid wasn't it yeah and then I had a break 
and then as I was sort of starting to think about get riding again obviously then this come up and the team said don't we're not giving you a bike like get it right so yeah. which which I'm glad that that's how it's gone um and then yeah obviously then four months with that so in total it was like six seven months not being on a bike which for the yeah, I did I thought yeah get back on a bike will be it's good a, to it's, go it is amazing isn't it how yeah. like your muscle memory all your yeah. actions I know that now because I was fortunate like you up until this injury to go a long time most of my career without getting injured and then I took a load of time off and now started to get back riding and, and you you know even though I'm knocking on you think oh, it's, you know you know, like yeah. a bike get back on it and then all of a sudden like, all the little muscle memory things all the little reaction times the timing yeah. the, the, the hand eye coordination all those things yeah the, it was it was the eyes adjusting to the speed and looking at the bumps coming up which was the biggie for me yeah like yeah like i say fat cat i was oh. miles off the pace i mean fat cat's quite a fast um sort of <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch the bumps the there the yeah so when i was going around there i thought bloody hell i've got a lot of work to do here <laughs> <laughs> and then i i literally all i did was i think i rode a day day off rode a day day off so i was just didn't matter what track i just took my bike home just went anywhere i could like even i think i did like monday wednesday friday sunday tuesday like yeah. did that for two weeks um and it it actually didn't once i was just doing that it sort of didn't take too long to come back um i think yeah after fat cat it maybe was about three or four rides i started to actually feel like oh right i'm you're getting some starting to feel like I that was, can... that's what i was gonna ask you next expectation managing expectation you know did did at any point when you knew you would come back riding what did you sit yourself down did the team sit yourself down and you go like right let's just or did you go did you kind of imagine where you place yourself first ride back was you even apprehensive nervous about your first race back um well we actually went to belgium for two weeks uh riding I was hoping to go over there and ride with Bobby, but Bobby was injured, obviously, because of his yeah. shoulder. So me and Paul went over, uh, just did two weeks riding over there, and because obviously Paul was over there with Bobby, yeah, because Paul was Bobby's mechanic this year, so he was obviously over there with him training and stuff. So he sort of could see for himself of like lap, or lap times and stuff. And when we was over there to start with, it was a bit slow, and then by the second week, I started to feel like I was picking the pace well I was and Paul could sort of see that and we went to Lelystad uh, in Holland I think that was the, the Wednesday Wednesday before Fox Hills because yeah. that was when they sort of said right we'll, we'll have a go at Fox Hills see how we get on and then we got so far when we was in Belgium I was like yeah I'll, I'll have a go at Fox Hills and just a lot of people would so, probably go oh, Fox Hill that's oh, I'm not sure about coming back to that track but obviously you, you know you like your hard pack Fox Hills yeah. could be one of your favourite yeah, tracks yeah yeah I, I quite like Fox Hills so yeah. I was a bit like yeah yeah Fox Hills being alright one to come back to and well we was at Lelystad because um, it doesn't change too much the track there and nah. Paul was sort of the lap time and stuff and I was but yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm like pretty much the same as Bobby yeah. going around there. Obviously, day to day it does change a little bit, but I wasn't that far off, and I I didn't really know what to expect. So in qualifying, I remember in qualifying at Fox Hills, I just sort of went out and I thought, oh, I'll just sit behind Sean and and try and just tag on to yeah. him for a lap and just just see and just, just see what you can do basically yeah and well within half a lap he was holding me up i was like <laughs> yeah oh. i couldn't believe it and yeah. then um i think i qualified fifth in the end there um sec and then the first race i got a good start and uh i think i i gated fifth and passed someone i think it was stewie i passed and then was in fourth and then dylan hurt himself so he, so then yeah. i was in third but I was just sat behind Tommy and I was a bit like, should I really be here already? Yeah. <laughs> After the amount, long time I've had off and uh, yeah, I didn't didn't really feel like I should have been there, but I kind of so was. Quite, and quite a nice, pleasant surprise really then. Yeah, yeah. Really well. I, I'd literally had like three, maybe four weeks on the bike and I was going around behind Tommy in third and yeah, it was, it was quite a good feeling. I... The only thing that I didn't have there was like that extra little... Just the race fitness, yeah. you know, the, yeah. Yeah, just like anything, it just takes a little while to build that. But you've been building nicely. 
Um, just go, go and take a bit of a step back. We've always said, or I've always said, and I'm not the only one, you know, watching you come through your youth career into the 250 that, you know, um, you've got a very smooth, precise riding style. Um, many of us in the industry have said, apart you know, today. apart from today, <laughs> we'll get onto that, um, that you, you know, that you was always going to be suited to a, to a 450, you know, like just to have that extra torque, that power. You've always been very good on throttle control. So what were you into your 450 career now? Sort of two years, a year and a half, you doing it really? Year and a half? It's your first year, really, aren't you? Well, it's my first actual year on a 450. Yeah. I, I did have, obviously... That's what I mean. You, in, you, in the winter, I had yeah. a little go on 450. But and then, as an actual season, this is yeah, really, I mean, yeah. delayed start. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, yeah, it hasn't got off to the best of starts with a knee injury. And today at the Michelin MX Nationals, obviously, it hasn't gone gone well. But, you know, coming back with your knee injury, you've had a good couple of results, you know, the uh, before Black Salt, you know, that you came back well there. You came to our Rocket Till Sundown event. I know, again, a track you like, but look, look really smooth, nice yeah. and smooth. So yeah, apart gone. from today, where you've... Uh, let's just talk that, about what happened today. You was looking... You, you top qualifying, yeah, was, looking really yeah. good. Uh, didn't make such a great start in the first moto. We no, started... my, um, I tried a different start block today, and uh, I don't know what happened. Some say I kicked it or something, but it went underneath my back wheel. So as ah, I went... So you it, hit it, the wheel. Yeah, yeah. So then I was last up the start straight, and... Well, within a lap, I think I was in sick out of everyone. That's your new um, flexible knee. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it just like slingshotted the thing yeah. back, it's too springy. Yeah, so I was actually, I was, I was going for it in the first one and I felt like, I felt like I could, I could have got Well, you was into, coming through good and yeah. then, and then it all went a little bit peak Tom, yeah. as they say. So tell us <laughs> where on the track and what happened. Yeah, there was just a couple of riders bunched up going into the turn before the whoops and I just, if I, if I followed him, Dad probably would have turned around to me and said, <laughs> give me it, like, why was you following? Oh, uh, so. I, 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 listen, I, I used to race with his dad, Andy. We, we were, yeah, I know exactly what, <laughs> I can imagine exactly what Dad would have been saying if you hadn't attacked, attacked, attacked. Yeah. I've had him roll up the inside of me and round that on numerous occasions, yeah. Totally yeah. know where you're coming from with that. So I thought, no, I'm not going to follow. So I pinned it to the outside and Elliot, and I, I'm, I think it was uh, Walsh, yeah. Elliot and Walsh was in the inside and I obviously because I've gone to the outside I've gone slightly past Elliot but then Elliot's got the inside so he's doubled in and then as I've I've clicked down into second which really in hindsight I should have kept it in third because I wanted to change up straight away again but you just want to attack 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 and as I've come out I've gone in the berm and as I've come out the corner I've clicked to third and just as I've gone to take off I obviously I, I don't think I've clicked it completely no, into yeah. third and it's sort of in between and then it's I think it's dropped back out into false neutral right as I took off it could have done it a little bit sooner mm. and I could have maybe backed out of going for it but I was already going for the triple you were so. going for it they were going for it uh, yeah. for those of you that want to watch that by the way just go on to the Mitch and MX Nationals Facebook page the live stream is on there it's happened now of course but go and watch the live stream and get to the first pro race and just I have actually um, shared it onto. Oh my, right, well there uh, you go. So it's well. on his Facebook page. Uh, yeah. it made me and Swanee in commentary do the big whoa, whatever. We actually thought, obviously we can't tell as commentators, but no. we thought that maybe you had a bike issue. And the reason we thought you had a bike issue <laughs> is because the way you were throwing your arms up in the air yeah, afterwards. No, but that was I frustration was, on yeah, your behalf. I was, I was not happy with myself because I knew how good I was going, and just something like that is just like, well, not ruined my whole day, but it was just. Yeah, it, it's it racing, just happens. It? Yeah, and and also because I felt okay, I've I've banged my shoulder a little bit and I've I've hurt my heel a little bit. But other than that, I could have picked a bike up and gone on. Yeah. But I looked at the bike and it was just bits everywhere. It was literally totaled it. Yeah. But actually, we took it back and it it wasn't as bad as what it looked. So that we managed to um get it fixed up. Yeah, I saw Dad rate. come out and rescue you. He's probably in your ear at that point. Um, second motor then, it's just tell us what, what went on there because again, you know, you you it's not quite where you wanted to be but like I said, on the flip side mate, you are working yourself back to race fitness. So what went on in the second one? Uh, the second one, I didn't get the best of jumps at the start. We've, we've tried a few things this week starts and to be honest, I wish I just left it alone because mm. <laughs> my starts at Black Sea at the British were were pretty good. Um, I, I just messed up a little bit in the first turn at Black Sea, so but my actual off the gate and 
the first half of the straight it was it, they've been good and then this week we've tried a few things and yeah it just really didn't work so it's not, it's not a bad time to try things though because obviously regards of championship position and all that you, you've missed most of the year so you're not yeah you know yeah, you use I'm, these final few races yeah, to, to almost with one eye very much on 2022 yeah, definitely yeah yeah it's yeah even now i think like oh i'm pretty pretty happy with where i'm at at the minute because yeah i, I think i've been back riding for two months and that's like some and everyone else is prep january february so i've got to be pretty happy with where i'm at speed wise like i'm pretty much on nearly on to like the every all the top boys like i had third at blackswood last week got on the podium at the british um Paul still owes me 100 quid because we had a bet on it. <laughs> Paul bet me 100 quid if I got on the podium by the end of the year. So Excellent. <laughs> he, That's he always needs to good. Pay up. <laughs> Get the Rennie readies out like yeah. that. Like that. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's going well. Um, but, yeah, this, the second moto, I just got a crap start and you know, I was mid pack and managed to get back to fourth, out of, I think. Behind but it was it was yeah that last moto we had a bit of drizzle the track was super gnarly then it came down so it, but having said that it, you know um again the, the, with the ruts and everything it was it was a tough track out there today towards the, the end of the second moto yeah it it was actually there were some gnarly holes and bumps that sort of would pitch you wrong if you caught them wrong um but i think the track was pretty good today yeah, it it's, it's one of the best it's been really they they did a really good job i'm not just saying that because i'm only yeah 40 minutes down no, the road this but... is one of the reasons <laughs> there's many reasons i want to catch up with josh obviously he's missed most of the season but also i kind of thought if i catch up in the day he's not going to be one rider that wants to get going um so I, he'll have time to chat so that's the good thing so what does josh gilbert do now then regards of next year you know what's what's your watch have you agreed with the team what's the plan and i guess to a degree because you've missed half the seat half the season where others will rest you'll maybe be able to keep up your core fitness and and be really you know in a good shape to start of 2022 yeah i mean i'm gonna have to i haven't really thought about the end yet i've just been sort of taking it week by week because i'm still not i'm still not as strong as the others yet yeah like yeah i just i do I just haven't. I haven't been on a 450 for very long, so I haven't got well, the yeah, you strength. You haven't had a roll with it, um, have you? You literally, no, you know, no. kind of. I haven't had a pre-season yet on the 450, so next year it'll be. I'm quite. I am quite confident on the 450. Um, yeah. Yeah. So next year we'll sort of see and just get a, hopefully get a good a good yeah. pre-season behind me and. About the minute, up. I suppose. You know, are you in a? You're not. Are you you know talks ongoing with the guys have you agreed anything or it's um, just it's... nothing's really been said as of yet yeah, yeah. not not really no. um because the deals now are they're almost getting later again it got, it got really early and now they've sort of been pushed back because yeah, of covid yeah. and stuff it's yeah i mean i feel like i've uh I feel like I've showed potential. Like to think, so. Yeah. So what? What? Just remind me to make me feel old because obviously you know, as I said, used to race with your dad, Andy. How old are you now? Twenty three. Uh, yeah. these, these man in the van interviews don't get any easier. Oh <laughs> well, no! Twenty three, I mean... getting on. <laughs> God, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> Although um, a lot of the four fifty boys are. Uh... Uh, you've got, about 30 now I think yeah you, know, you think you're getting on listen you've got plenty of time uh, you're not even probably at your peak powers yet you're probably still three or four years away from that yeah so. I, I, like yeah I'd like to have a go at GPs really yeah but, like see see I because I, I do feel that the 450 does suit me yeah I know I've been told that a lot but yeah I, I wanted to stay on the 250 and sort of because you can go 450 quite early, like you're on it for a long time. So yeah. I kind of, and then obviously Puck gave me the deal to do the GPs last year, and that was, that was yeah mega opportunity. So I I took that, and it's a shame the British didn't run last year with the 250. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. Yeah. I was feeling feeling pretty good on the 250 last year. Um, so yeah, then 450 now and wow. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, you got hopefully nice yeah. clean run now. Get yeah. to build up some confidence, and um, yeah, as we said, I, I've I've said it from the outset from watching you back at this venue back in the Red Bull Pro National days. Yeah, you've got that 
that throttle control that everything's geared up towards riding a big bike and hopefully now you build up some core yeah fitness and strength yeah, like I said maybe strength. maybe catch the others up like you said that's not on talent on on just experience yeah and, and yeah I, I think I feel like I got the speed now yeah um and I, I feel like even week to week I'm I'm even getting a little bit more confident and um just just yeah week by week slowly even if it's a couple tenths of a second I still feel like I'm edging closer and closer to obviously Kulas and Tommy and Bobby because to start with they did have the raw speed on me um, but now I feel like I am on the same level yeah, as them I just there. I now just need to bring up the 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 fitness and the strength for the whole moto so yeah it'll it's, come it's, I'm not got no doubt about that um, Josh it's been great catching up with you yeah, um, you. always a pleasure to talk to Josh Gilbert um, this will be the first time in many times Josh is going to be home before me yeah. um, we're down his neck of the woods <laughs> he, how, how long just just to just to annoy me how long is it going to take you to get home 40 minutes oh you sod although um, you'll be at Cuss's next week and that's true far, that so. is true so I'll be I'll be at Cuss's going out having a safe trip home I'll be all I get when I, all I get when everyone comes here is oh how far is it for you <laughs> I'm like how many I have to do it every yeah, other weekend yeah like Black's all last week it was seven hours and it's just oh wow yeah then we got Duns as well at Scotland I know yeah. that's yeah. that's long for you though as well yeah. isn't it so but having said yeah. that pros and cons Cornwall is a lovely place to be isn't it um, yeah no doubt about it so listen pal take uh, good care of that knee Keep up the good work. Um, we'll probably be chat chatting with uh, Josh at some point next year. We won't leave it for two years next time. See a little no. progress report next year. Yeah. Again, mate, all the best. Uh, thanks for joining us in Man in the Van. Yeah, That's Josh Gill, everybody. Uh, you can part your way, make your massive 40 minute journey home. <laughs> um, I'm going to be stopping several times for food. I always talk about food. Nice one, Josh. See you, see you uh, soon. You. That's Josh Gilbert. Um, good to see him in good form. Uh, he's still limping a bit actually, but that might be his ankle that he's hurt today. Again, thank you for joining me uh, with Man in the Van, brought to you by Whole Shot Motorhomes. Again, apologies guys for the state of the vehicle. Haven't really been home since our Rocket Till Sundown event. Got a lot of prizes and stuff in here to hang out. Look, still got all the little number boards from our event that I've got. <laughs> Goes on. But uh, I love what I do, so I'll be cleaning the van this week and uh, hopefully it'll be all sparkly and clean for another man in the van from uh, Michelin MX Nationals next week, the final round that's gonna be at Cuss's Gorse. And of course, they got the straight rhythm on Saturday as well, which will be going out on the live stream. So if you're up to not much on Saturday, next Saturday night, uh, don't fancy going to the pub or watching crap TV, uh, join me and Callum Swan on the Mitchell MX Nationals live stream for the straight rhythm. That's me done. I'm going to cruise home now, nice and steady, save my voice for next week. Everybody have a good week out there in Planet Moto. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you soon for another Man in the Van. Take care, everybody.